All right. Um, go ahead and log into Blackboard and you should see the final project posted. And go ahead and read those and we'll wait for more people to show up and then we'll discuss it. How many people do we have at this point? Seven students. No, oh, wait another minute or two. All right, so eight students, uh, let's, let's call that good. First of all, you may have seen, I'm giving a 24 hour extension on the last problem set if you really want it, but I would encourage everyone to take some time now to look at the two final exam uh, projects. First one is to basically design a simple microscope with three lenses. Um, you've got ZMAX, it can do a lot of the optimization for you. This will hardly be the best microscope ever, but um, I just want you to see how, good, how well you could do 
with something relatively simple. So it's a 5X magnification microscope. Um, I give you some specs on what the edge thicknesses should be. I tell you what the lens separation should be. And you need to look at a field of view that goes five, half a millimeter above and below the axis. Um, and I give you a few other specs. And I want you to minimize wavefront error across the field of view and then find the aperture diameter that minimizes spot size. And then I give you a list of things to submit. Any questions so far on that? The other thing I want you to do is basically a follow-up to the DBR assignment. You, you designed distributed Bragg reflectors and you should have found that the width of this dip was different for the two reflectors that you designed. For one of them, it was, for the one with the large refractive index contrast, it was quite wide. For the one with the small refractive index contrast, it was smaller. And so now I want to consider a hypothetical, just some arbitrary refractive indices. We'll say that one of them is two and the other one is, well, a little bit bigger than two. And I want you to see how does the width change? I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, if the refractive index contrast is really tiny, the width of this dip is really small. Okay, that's true. Well, is the width proportional to the difference in refractive indices? Is it proportional to the square root of the difference? Difference squared, something else? I want you to see, I want you to work with alternating quarter wave layers and uh, just find out what it would be. You're gonna probably, since these are very thin layers, in order to get a nice large dip, you're gonna probably need to work with a large number of layers. Rather than typing something out 200 times, if you just say that coding layers is equal to, here's a pair of layers times 200, Python takes that pair of layers and gives you 200 copies of it all strung together. And that saves you a whole lot of typing. So one of them is, I think this one is the more straightforward. Here's something you've already designed. Now I'll just try a bunch of different cases and see how one parameter depends on another. And the other one is a little more open-ended. You're given three lenses, or you get to give us three lenses. You get to design them and pick whatever radii of curvature you want. How good can the performance be? Any questions? You probably won't have questions until you've had some time to look at this and read through it and start trying some things. Um, I am committed to being here until seven because that's my job. I have to make, I'm not going to stay here until seven if everyone logs off, but you know, I can stay here up till seven if needed. That's my work hours. So if you wanna just hang out here and read through it and start trying some things, as long as you're logged on, I'll be logged on. Otherwise I'll have all of my usual office hours next week. And I'll also make it a point to read email very quickly. And I get to touch a bug. Oh, what? Every one of my family. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's something playing in the background. Um, Professor, I have a question. Um, so when you say for the microscope um portion of the project. When you said lens diameter, is it referencing to the outer diameter? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If I'm talking about the radius of curvature, I will always try to remember to say radius of curvature. If I don't, then, but when in doubt, I, I never say diameter of curvature. So you can assume that diameter is an outer diameter and or the diameter 
of the aperture in front of it, but it will never, I will never talk about diameter of curvature. Um, will your office hours be the same next week? Yep. But it'll also be available at other times as needed. You have until 7 p.m. next Thursday. For the lens diameter, um, the semi diameter would just be 6.25, right? Just be half what you gave. That's what semi diameter is. Yep, it's okay. half the diameter. Just remembering Z Max. Um, Professor, can you um, expand on the point when you said a step-by-step -step narrative of what you optimize? So you, okay, you don't need to describe everything you do between now and next Thursday, but once you've got something set up, you, um, you could try, there's a bit of trial and error here, all right? And so what I wanna know basically is what cases did you compare with? If you say, I don't need to know everything you did between now and Thursday, I don't need to know the first you typed 6.25 for a semi-diameter and then you typed the word BK7. But I need to know that first we tried this aperture, we, we first fixed the aperture diameter and then we tried optimizing the lens performance. So we ran the, uh, the merit function and optimized the lens. Then we tried a different aperture diameter and again optimized. So we tried optimized designs at different diameters and compared those. I need to basically know what are the things that you're comparing, All right? We optimized this, we optimized for this case and determined the spot size. Then we optimized for that case and determined the spot size. And you know, I need to know that you optimize the radii of curvature for what aperture? Because once you've fixed the design, once you've decided, okay, I'm gonna use lenses with these radii of curvature and these positions and whatever else, then you have to tell me how you determined what the best uh, aperture is. And so I need to know when you change the aperture, did you change the radii of curvature again? Or did you fix the radii of curvature and then change the aperture? I need to be very clear on what comparisons you're doing. If you show me two plots, I need to know were these two plots for the exact same lens design, just say different aperture diameters, or were they for different radii of curvature and different diameters? I need to know that. Because to say that this is the best, I need to know best compared to what. Think of it in those terms, not in terms of what exactly does he need me to type. Think about it. I mean, of course, on some level, you, you could think of it in terms of what exactly does he need me to type so I can get this many points. But I'm really not trying to be one of those. I'm really not just trying to be like, think of something bigger than the game of points. I'm trying to communicate, what does it mean to make a comparison? Right. If you say this is the best, better than what? Because clearly this is not the best microscope you could ever make. This is the best within a certain set of constraints. When we change this aperture, what are we holding constant while we change it? Think about describing your steps that way. For minimizing the wavefront error across the field of view, I feel like we always minimized it for just on axis objects. For the field of view, would we just kind of weight uh, the off axis objects, the similar, and then run our optimization? Okay. Yep.
Anyway, I'm happy to take questions as long as people are logged in. For those who just came in a little late, you know, I, I showed the assignment and if people want to work on this for a little while and try things and ask me questions as they try things, I'll just sit here and read and wait for questions to come up. But you are not, I, I'll stay here as long as people are logged in. I'm available until seven because, you know, that's my work hours tonight. But I'm not going to make you stay here until seven unless you'd rather if you'd rather wrap something up for another class before focusing on this. Do what you need to do. I have a question about the um, the last DBR assignment. Mm -hmm. Um, since it sort of uh, the new project references it, uh, is it was the the first case the SIO two. Um, um, oh yeah, the SIO two layer. The, the wider the, the one that basically gave gave the wider width uh -huh. was such because it had a higher difference between the indices of refraction for the layering material uh-huh okay uh just wanted to clarify that because i forgot yeah. to mention that thank yeah. you mm -hmm. I have a question kind of off the ZMAX one. Um, okay. I don't think you have to in include it in, in the assignment, but I was just wondering, um, say if we were to use an MTF graph to show you our results for how good this microscope is, is there a certain spatial resolution that microscopes work in that is better than others? What do you mean? I mean, some microscopes have much better resolution than others. Like, say, say you can achieve, because I mean, the, the graph is sometimes, I mean, it can go up and down and like you can achieve a spatial resolution out further, but you'll sacrifice lower spatial resolution. So like as a higher spatial resolution, uh better than if you sacrifice lower spatial resolution if I'm, that makes sense are you talking about like the difference between say a curve that just goes out a certain distance and then stays fairly high an mtf that stays fairly high for out to some spatial frequency then drops rapid ra rapidly versus something that drops slowly yeah or or something that like 
kind of looks like a sinusoid wave or something like that in an MTF curve. I really want the sinusoid because I feel like, how do I know if I'm chopping out intermediate features, how do I know that what I'm seeing is too small features as it's really two distinct small objects as opposed to something more elaborate with parts of it that got smudged. Yeah, which is why I was wondering if a microscope is like operates in a certain spatial resolution versus another spatial resolution. If that makes sense. Um, like if you were, if you had a microscope that had a specific job of just looking at certain cells that you know you need this spatial resolution for so you can eliminate other ones would it be better to develop an mtf curve that catered that so i only care about the really small features i mean I'm trying to think what advantage there would be to to getting rid of the large features. I mean, one thing I could say is that I'm just trying to, to envision a scenario where something has terror. Well, I mean, basically what you're talking about is applying a high pass filter, what you're basically talking about. And sometimes people will apply high pass filters to remove background. The only case that I'm aware of is generally where the signal has such low contrast that you need to get rid of the background to see it. And so I'm aware of like a phase contrast microscopy, which is basically something where instead of looking at how much light is emitted or transmitted, depending on whether you're doing fluorescent, you know, emitted in fluorescence by microscopy, transmitted or reflected in light, light, light uh, illuminate in illumination microscopy. Um, in phase contrast, they basically look at variations in refractive index. And so then areas that would be highly homogeneous get filtered out. Okay. So like kind of building on that, like say I designed this microscope for 550 nanometers, but I don't achieve a spatial resolution that I need in order to resolve certain objects. Could I then change the wavelength or something or, some, or refractive index to achieve a different MTF for that? Working with a shorter wavelength is generally going to get you better resolution. I mean, there's a reason why light microscopes are preferred over infrared when feasible. They use infrared microscopes. Basically, we, people use infrared when they want to look at something that's too deep to see with visible light. But cell biologists looking at a you know, single cell almost never use infrared. I mean, there's, there's always an exception. But in general, the, the workhorse tool for cell biology would be light microscopy with visible light. And they'd probably go down to UV if they could. It's just that you run into other problems there. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking about like providing an MTF curve for this assignment, but... I mean, you could certainly provide an MTF. That, that would be fine. That is one way to quantify resolution. If you start yeah. talking about trade-offs and designing an MTF, I don't think we're going to hit any of that here. Yeah, but is it like, say, say I just have, um, I can have, I can achieve a better spatial resolution with this other design, but would that even matter? Would that even matter depending on what I'm imaging? I just want to see the best. I just want to see, for simplicity here. 
we just wanted to get the highest spatial resolution. See, what is the best spatial resolution you could get with this primitive design? Okay. I know I'm making it more complicated than it is. I just <laughs> wanted to ask. That's okay. I'll be back in a moment. I gotta take care of some downstairs.